morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. Today we're going to talk about everybody's favorite subject. Well, not really. NFT. So this is just my opinion. And what I want to say about the state of NFTs right now is they're freaking boring. There's nothing attractive about them. And yes, it's just people who are very lucky to be in a very particular point of time to be able to make and trade and basically utilize the system that's set in place. That's just my opinion. But I know a lot of things are changing. Because right now, being relevant in this market, right now, this whole crypto ecosystem, whether you're in Bitcoin or in your Ethereum or the altcoin network, you have to understand about and think about the pace and speed of everything that's happening. Because right now, and what we're seeing, what I explore and what I'm looking at, basically interested in investing in different things, 99% of all MTs will not succeed, period. If you think this is art and there are people experimenting to do what they want. And again, bottom line, this is all code. Bottom line, everything that we hear is protocols and code from loopering uh, to the different how the NFTs are minted, every, all the transactions, everything is code. Now, the next level of programming, making an NFT interact with how it's coded into a wallet or app is going to be important. Exactly what I feel like loopering is doing right now. They released something out, some news out today. We'll talk about in a couple minutes, but the state of the NFT and how we interact, buy, hold, and identify ourselves with what we buy and purchase and how we are going to be using that as part of our own identity is going to be a huge. This is going to be huge. Again, we're talking a year or two in the future, basically, because right now I think about this, you can't physically see it. It's only just talk about discussion because being powered by blockchain right now, entities are very static because they're limited to the blockchain world only. And that's it. They're static because, you know, just by the programming, they're only held on a few of the marketplaces, OpenSea, Rarible, Nifties, and hopefully GameStop with what they're doing about soon, maybe six months, maybe a year. But what I'm sure what GameStop is going to be doing again, something has not been done before. And that is vital to understanding to sit back and relax because coding takes time. The state of development like for everything right now is exponential. The more we see things grow in the last two years, altcoins has been huge. Doesn't matter if Solana, Cardano, I mean, Dogecoin, Shiba Inu, Loopring, all of everything that's been happening has just been an exponential rise and fall with all of that. And you have to expect that. But I mean, don't get me wrong. NFTs aren't anything fancy yet. And I'm not expecting them to be anything right now because the coding and work just to initiate, develop, <laughs> release more dynamic ranges and variables when you connect all this together is a huge task for a team. I've been doing a lot of my own research and work into this just as a single beginner, intermediate developer or programmer, artist, whatever you want to say, it's a very, very deep and entrenching task for one person to get into. But impressive. If you have the skills and talent out there, it is very impressive to think about what you want to do, how you want to market, create, and really establish yourself as an NFT creator or artist. So anyway, that's been pretty interesting. But some really good news as with Twitter and also with Reddit. They've been testing two methods for users to enable NFTs as their icons. This is great. It's a good start because you have to keep in mind this is an early stage. And the whole testing out this whole ecosystem right now, and of course they're expecting it to be built on Web3. Now keep that in mind. Establishing and be built on Web3. Now, what is Web3? I think of Web3 is kind of like the Tesla truck. It's there, but it's not here. You have an idea in your head and people are always talking about it. We've seen it a long time ago. It's being built right now and it's being developed like the Tesla truck is and when it will be rolled out, well, we're not sure. So all the talk about Web3 and what will be done and how this will be enabled, that's great to hear about because the more development, the more discussion, which is that's important because it's all coming down to coding, enabling multi-layer of the NFTs interact with its wallet and also the environment functions. This to me is the most exciting part of this. This is where I see leaving the static JPEG image and going to more dynamic ranges of interaction of how we use the cell phones, how we use our lives, how we interact with our clothing, trends, music, ticketing. I mean, it just expands, expands. To me, it's exciting, but we have to see more development with this. An artist can make an NFT and put in the contract that if you buy this piece of art, it allows you to come to my studio and I'll do a self-portrait. It allows you to get the paint buckets that I used. If NFTs were around when Jackson Pollock was around and you could get the paint buckets, that those paint buckets today would be worth just as much as the damn paintings. This is a game-changing technology because of the contract underneath the collectible. All right, because 
NFTs are dynamic as they are going to connect to off-chain data sources, you know, IoT data, web APIs, and just data providers because you have your ability to interface with real-world data sources, all right? Real-world sources around you and basically whatever's on your, your phone. Different functions from pretty much anything, weather, seasons, clothing, trends, just skins like in video game. Now, we've seen that through a lot of the different things, especially with Loopring right now, with how they're going to be interacting with their Loopheads NFT. New dynamic level with their brain expanding and, and doing different things, but you can hopefully possibly change layers of their clothes and how trade and do a lot of different things. That's great. Now, Loopheads and Loopring team, they've taken this on and basically, I think, given a great leapfrog to a huge set of dynamics and coding and how the communities can interact and really learn and see new trends developing. That's fantastic because what's possible of merging artistic ideas with creative tech, creative technical skills, it's going to be a great, great to see this. Now, people has done a great job with his own NFT work. You know, he's got his own team that worked to build up that, his own setups with all that. But just right now, see what Loop Ring's done is great news and how they've been releasing now the different loop heads um, with a few of the airdrops over the next year. Um, they've got 10,000 release and I think 10, sorry, this is a Chinese word for 10, uh, no symbol hand symbol, 10 different um, airdrop releases. With that, that's really exciting. And it, it's also going to see how the Mutant Apes collection goes on and a lot of other things come on. Because what's going to be the next trend? We don't know. That's where the challenge is here and there and pretty much anywhere with anything. It's a wide open market. Adidas is coming out. Nike's coming out. Walmart's coming out. I, I can't see that. That's just a scary thought. But anyway, but I'm not expecting instant rewards and I'm not expecting loopering price to skyrocket when things happen to $5, $10. You have to understand development takes time. Same with GameStop and all these other projects going on. Adoption is most important within the communities. How we interact with communities and it's vital for this to spread out like bees carrying pollen. It takes time. You know, growth does take time, but things can happen so fast. If you want something to happen so fast, it can die down just as fast and just crash and have nothing left. A good slow adoption to me is a better steady pace as things get spread out and spread out like pollen, helping to grow and germinate, spread everything, pollen and all the flowers, all of that. That's important. Now, for example, once you think about this, Pokemon Go, they showcase how a game can interface with real world to create global competitiveness, experiences, and community interaction. This is huge. Where I see NFTs going, enabling interaction with the NFTs is a baseline function of po Pokemon Grow created huge network effects spreading out. I mean, this was wildfire. I don't have to go and explain this anymore. People are still playing it over here in Taiwan. There's few, seldom people play it, but it's been years and years of people playing this. And that is the network effects that we want to see with the adoption of cryptocurrency, adoption of NFTs, not just with art, or something you hold on your open sea contract, which again, that's another topic for another whole video. Why I don't really appreciate and like open sea because it's just a very centralized marketplace. We need some more ability to move things around. But hopefully, Loop brings to me enabling this, and hopefully, GameStop will again help to enable NFTs to get around a lot more. But what I want from an NFT is something you have to work to get and work to change and develop. Price comes after the acquisition to me how you develop it, how you enable it, and what have you done to grow it. Just like with with Pokemon Go, you had your little Pokemon, and whatever, the more you battled with it, the more power it got, different things you do. So enabling NFTs to really develop and get along the lines like this, yeah, it's going to be see how it gets upgraded. And also, also, how accessible is it to others in your network? If you sell to somebody else, does it get upgraded? I mean, there's so many different connection variables that can be coded into this. And uh, really mapping that out is going to be fun, exciting, difficult, but also it's a worldwide ecosystem here. Not just related to the USA, everywhere around the world. This the whole crypto ecosystem is a worldwide marketplace right now. And to me, it's exciting and it's early stages to all of this. So with NFTs, with GameStop, Loopring, OpenSea, everything that's happening right now, I'm just excited to see the developers working hard and also the artists from kids, moms, parents, teenagers, hard workers that are, you know, sitting in the car and they've got an idea, draw it up, think about it and get it shared out. That's what it's all about. The communities. So all of you out there, have a great night. It's almost Friday. And Monday is Chinese New Year. 
All right, that's important. So hopefully Loopring will put out something for their new red packets. All right, so 131 is New Year's Eve in the Asian world over here. Um, fireworks going off all night. So, all of you, game on.